So someone asked me uh, in the comments about uh, talking about my experience as a graduate student in physics of the PhD. I went all the way through and finished it. Uh, now this is a story and I'll piece it together into multiple videos uh, because I know people don't like long videos and I, I want to I tell the story correctly. So And I think it's going to be more than 15 minutes, which is how long my camera usually lasts. Uh, a story for another day. I think I need to fix that someday. Uh, so... So in this video, I'm only going to talk about everything that happened between me deciding that I wanted to pursue a PhD in physics in 1988, an old guy, and starting my PhD program in 1995. So that's seven years uh, because, of course, I worked uh, between my undergraduate and getting back into physics. Uh, so again, my experience is unique. It's not going to fit most people's experience. Uh, most people, I believe, finish their bachelor's, go straight into a PhD program. Uh, that's a great way to go. In my case, it turned out that I was pretty burned out. Uh, and so I actually left the university with a degree in electrical engineering, got a job in technical sales, and then went back and uh, did the PhD. So it all started, and, and this is a story that, you know, things will happen to some people. Some people are very lucky that they, uh, they start on a, on a field, they start on a, in, a, in a field, and they, uh, they go straight, right? It's like, mommy, daddy, I want to be a doctor. Guess what? You go through pre-med, you, you become a doctor. Uh, but that's not what happened to me. In my case, I sort of knocked with something, did something, and then when did something else, did something else, did something else. That's just a story of how it played out. You, I'm sure you may be a completely different person. So I was into semiconductors uh, in the 80s, early 80s, because that was hot. And so when I went to undergraduate school in electrical engineering, I was going to do semiconductors. But even though you see in the press today that everybody wants to do semiconductors because there's all these fab fabrication facilities called fabs, all these fabs that are being built in the U.S. because the U.S. is worried about uh, China taking over the, the fabs over in Taiwan. When I was in undergrad, it's the time when many of those fabs were established and the jobs in the U.S. were lost. So as I graduated out of undergrad, this, that, pr that process pulled the rug from under me and I just went and worked in technical sales for a few years, paid off my loans. Uh, but Getting back to how it all started is because every electrical engineer is taught what's called baby quantum. And Iceberg and Resnick, you know, I'm going to actually do like a little twofer in this video. I have my little notes. Uh, this video is a twofer for a little bit of a story, but then also showing you a, a book. A book that I think is really, really good. So if you're like a high school student, if you're like a freshman or a sophomore, uh, this is the perfect quantum mechanics book to get started because it's really, it's what's called baby quantum, okay? It's really baby quantum. It's got a lot of text. It explains in gory detail all the, the developments, all the fundamental developments for the old quantum theory, everything with differential equations, uh, getting all the way to the Schrodinger equation, uh, which is the, the uh, differential equation for the probability density functions for the uh, outer shell electrons in chemistry. And so, yeah, I, I highly recommend this book. This book was being taught in another class different from the one that I took. But when I took baby quantum in my, I think it was my sophomore year, I was like, man, I'm in electrical engineering. It's going to be cool. I'm going to do it. Yeah, sure, let's do it. But even then, as a, so as a sophomore, I was thinking about whether I wanted to do graduate school and I realized I did not want to do a double E PhD. Uh, and so that's why I got out, I finished, and then I had a job, you know, job making money, technical sales, and it sucked. And then I said, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a PhD in physics. And so one of these things that happened in life, uh, somebody I knew from back in my, in my old school, who I never met in my old school, but I met when I went back home, uh, told me, hey, you know, based on what you want to do, why don't you just go talk to the uh, graduate advisor or the department chairman at this local university near your house? And that's what I did. I went to the guy, took a day off from work, and I said, hey, I want to go back to, to uh, physics. I want to do a PhD in physics. I did electrical engineering undergrad. What do I do? 
and he said take a whole year of courses that bridge because I had not taken analytical mechanics uh, and I had I had not I had taken some quantum but not really a full quantum course the way it's tough for a physicist so sure enough I spent the whole year applied got in and so this is the first video this tells you how I went from um, being an electrical engineering student to getting out getting a job and then saying hey you know I want to go do physics and sure enough took the courses applied took the subject test all, all the things that you need to do and this is the story of how I went from 1988 to 2000 I'm sorry to 1995 first year graduate student in a PhD physics program